Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're talking about your minister's housing allowance or your MHA. And I'm gonna give you a quick tip here and I'm gonna tell you stop wasting your time or don't waste your time. So what do I mean by that? All right, minister's housing allowance is a tremendous benefit. If your organization, your church or your missionary organization, you qualify for MHA, they designate a portion of your pay as minister's housing allowance, you can get that piece of your pay tax free. Now, quick sidebar here, tax free gets us into trouble sometimes because that is income tax free. But as a, a pastor or missionary who is um, getting your MHA, you're likely subject to self-employment tax for Social Security and Medicare purposes. And minister's housing allowance is not tax free when it comes to the self-employment tax. You do owe self-employment tax, but you don't owe income taxes on your minister's housing allowance. So what is this? You know, people say, well, this is tax-free income. I want my minister's housing allowance to be as high as it possibly can. Absolutely. Under the tax code, what's available to you, you want to take every, uh, every penny available to you so that you can legally and appropriately minimize the amount of taxes you owe. So why am I saying don't waste your time? Well, there are additional expenses that take a little bit more time, a little bit more headache to track. And I and uh, honestly don't quite provide that much of a benefit. So let's go ahead and jump into an example. I'll give an example for a single pastor as well as a married pastor who has two kids, both receiving MHA. Not the kids, but both examples. All right. Now the single individual. Let's say you are a single individual. Your missionary or your pastor who qualifies for minister's housing allowance. You make thirty six thousand dollars a year. And your MHA portion of that $36,000 is $12,000. And then let's also say you are deferring $2,000 into your retirement account from your paycheck pre-tax into your 403B plan. Your standard deduction is $12,400. That's the number for 2020, assuming, you know, we're going to assume no other details about your particular situation. We're going to say that everything I just said is all there is to it. Now, your taxable income for income tax purposes, of course, will be the $36,000 minus the $12,000 of MHA minus the $2,000 that you set aside pre-tax into your retirement account. So that's going to bring you down to $22,000. Then you're going to subtract your $12,400 change deduction off of that. You're going to come up with your income tax. Your income tax is going to be about $600. All right. You're in the 10% tax bracket. So let's say, you know, $12,000 is your, your MHA number. And you say, well, well, what if I could get that to 12,500? You know, 12,000 is just my rent and my utilities and a couple of major repairs I did around the house. But what if I start looking at some of the maintenance that I did, which is an allowable expense for MHA? What if I start adding up? You know, I can go back, I can spend some time looking through my records, look for the, the cleaning supplies that I bought, you know, look for some of the landscaping things that I did around the house. I, I can probably get this up to another another five hundred dollars. I get twelve thousand five hundred dollars. You know, can can should I do that? All right, well, your MHA again, it, it's still subject to self employment tax. So you're you're not helping save anything on your Social Security, Medicare. You're just saving income tax. You're in the ten percent tax bracket. You spend that time looking for another five hundred dollars. And again, this is within the limit. So. Um, real quick, your MHA is the lesser of what you actually spent, what was designated on your W-2 or the fair rental value. So if your W-2 says 12,000, it's not gonna do you any good to add up the 12,500 because you're gonna be limited to what was actually designated of 12,000. If it's 12,500 and you've got 12,000 and you're saying, well, I can find another 500, let me add it up. Get to that 12,500, but the fair rental value is only 10,000. You're going to be limited to that 10,000. Doesn't matter what you add up. So this is assuming it was designated as 12,500. We're saying you you can only take 12,000 because that's your rent and utilities. And you're saying, well, I I, I can find the other 500. Uh, let me add these things up. Make sure these are documented in case they ever get checked by the IRS. Uh, I can get to twelve thousand five hundred. Right, that that five hundred dollars is going to save you fifty dollars in income tax because of um, you're in the ten percent tax bracket in this particular example. Is it worth it? 
But that's up to you. That's not up to me as your tax preparer. It's up to me to advise you and say, well, here's what's going to happen. You know, it's going to save you fifty dollars, and you're going to say, well, it's going to take me an hour for an hour for two hours for whatever, however long it's going to take you to add those things up. And you say it's not worth the fifty dollars. Don't worry about it. If you've got a budget software, you can quickly pull these numbers. And it's really not going to be that much time. And then absolutely, you know, let's do it. And and let's save the fifty dollars. It, it's legitimate. You qualify for it. Let's do it. But it's up to you to evaluate if your time and effort in tracking those things is worth the trade off of fifty dollars. My only point here is that it's not that big of big of a tax savings. Now let's take the married couple with two kids. All right, so you've got a married couple with two kids. The pastor is the only uh, only one earning income. Seventy two thousand dollars a year is what the pay is. Twenty thousand dollars of that is uh, minister's housing allowance. And you're also setting aside two thousand pre tax from your paycheck into your retirement plan. That's going to bring your taxable income seventy two thousand minus the MHA of twenty minus the pre tax contribution of two. That's going to bring you down to fifty thousand dollars of taxable income. You're going to subtract off, assuming the standard deduction twenty four thousand eight hundred again the twenty twenty number. And you also have two children. I, I didn't mention this, but let's say they're both under seventeen. They qualify for the child tax credit. All right, if this is your situation, your tax, your income tax, again, we're not looking at self-employment tax because the MHA doesn't affect that. Your income tax, because of the MHA, because of the standard deduction being 24800 and because of the child tax credit, your income tax is going to be zero. You owe no income tax. So what's the benefit of getting another... $500 of MHA if you go add up those minor expenses, you know, some, some landscaping and, and some cleaning supplies, you know, you say, I can get it up, you know, they designated me at 20,500. Right now we're only taking 20. I, I can get the other 500. What, what's the benefit of that? Well, it's not going to save you any income tax because you're already at zero. So, okay, that's out the window. However, in this particular situation, the person, the couple would not be taking uh, the full, they would not be benefiting from the full refundable child tax credits. So we're not going to go into the, the depths of that, but basically they're getting some refundable child tax credit, but not the full amount that they could. If they were to take another $500 of the MHA, uh, they would basically benefit from another $60. So first example, you're going to save $50 of tax here, basically going to save or, or maybe even get an additional refund of uh, $60. So about the same benefit. Uh, and again, this is up to you, you know, is the time and effort in tracking those minor expenses worth the $60 trade off? I can't make that decision for you. That's your decision. I'm here to give you the data so that you can make a decision on what it's worth to you. So my point is, you know, a lot of times people think that this is the saving on a tremendous amount. The incremental amount isn't that huge of a deal in these particular situations. There are other situations where it may make more of an impact or more expenses. Again, you find enough, if you qualify, sorry, not fine, but if you qualify for not another 500, but another thousand dollars, well, instead in the first example of 50, that's going to be uh, another hundred dollars of tax savings. Now, you're going to eventually cap out because that particular person, if you remember, only owed $600 of taxes. So at some point, you're going to reduce those taxes down to zero. And for the married couple, at some point, you're going to max out that refundable child tax credit. And an additional dollar in MHA is going to do you no good whatsoever. So it's possible you're already at the point, maybe with that married couple filing joint, your MHA, you're in California, in New York, your MHA is $25,000, $30,000. You might already just with your mortgage payment or your rent, uh, those two, one of those two things plus your utilities, just the simple things to calculate that are very easy to figure out and, and obtain the records for. You may already be fully benefiting from your NHA. Another five hundred dollars, another dollar is not going to benefit you at all. You could be in that situation. It could be in a situation where it's going to benefit you a little bit more. So that's why you need a tax professional to help you sit down and think through these things. It'll save you time. You know, you could be plugging in these numbers in the tax or giving them to a tax professional who's just kind of doing the tax return and not paying attention and not really being an advisor to you uh, and not helping you understand these things. And it could just be a big waste of time for you. So this is just kind of a, a beginning beginning process of step. You need to ask this question. You need to find an advisor who's going to help you with this because this is, this, is, um, this is beneficial information that you need to know because, again, like I said, it's going to save you time. 
instead of sitting there down after dinner and trying to put these things together, go throw the ball with your kid. Uh, so make sure you have someone who can advise you on this. Again, these are very basic assumptions and general guidelines. This isn't specific advice for you. You need to find a professional who can give you specific advice. If you have questions, reach out to me. Uh, I didn't mention this. My name is Brad. I'm with Gluten CPA. My goal with these videos and with my tax practice uh, is to bring peace to your tax and financial responsibilities. I hope that I've done that in a little way here with this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you're notified of new videos. Uh, I post videos about uh, Minister's Housing Allowance, about clergy taxes, and some other things as well, too. That's not my only focus, uh, but hopefully they're helpful to you. Uh, check those out when they come out. And if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me at my firm, and I'd love to, to help advise you in this area. Thanks for your time.